Right, well, good afternoon everybody. I should have said good evening. It's uh, the sun just starting to go down there here in the northeast. It's been an absolute cracking day. First class. Uh, Hurricane Hannah, well, <laughs> we've had worse. At, uh, the rest of the country got a bit of a pounding, but uh, not up here. We seem to escape pretty pretty lightly over the weekend. And a few gales through the night and a bit of rain, but uh, apart from that, it was. Uh, it was champion, which uh, I was glad. Um, Cucubits. Now it's, uh, it's one of them things, uh, people find it rather difficult to grow, which is a squash, a cucumber, and the melon family. Um, there's a couple of lads been posting online about losing seeds, um, tomatoes, over water and whatnot. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's one of them things, it's getting your watering right, uh, but uh, Prior to getting your water right, it's getting your compost right. If you've got a good compost, a good well-drained compost, really you shouldn't have any problems with watering. I know I always say I'm a great believer in watering from the bottom. Um, if you haven't got any trays, if you haven't got any solid trays, it's quite easy to make yourself a tray if you just get yourself... I've just been buying some new pots from the pound shop because I'm busy potting off my marigolds. Now I'll show you in the next part of the video how we're going with the marigolds. But if you've just got ordinary seed trays with holes in, uh, there's nothing to stop you putting a piece of polythene over there and just a newspaper in the bottom, a full newspaper. And all that does, you get your water in there, it actually your blotting paper. And yet your plants will just so slowly soak up what water they need. Um, Rololo uh, commented on the other night on the on the, on the YouTube channel that he had lost a lot of seed and he was, uh, he was wondering about how much water to put in in your trays. Well, it's quite simple. Once you get your pots in and you're going to water your plants, oh, that tomato is a bit pretty on the dry side, but what they're doing, they're sitting on a, there's the one there, it's perfect, it's lovely and moist. They're sitting on a big tree and all they do is pour water into there, let them soak it up. If they take it up a lot within a few minutes, I'll put more water on it. And it's, it's all down to experience, you know, it's, uh, it's getting to know what your plants like. Um, if your plants are really dry, um, and depending on your compost, once again, um, you'll find it pretty hard to water from above because uh, really dry compost, if you're just using a multi-purpose compost, I tend to, to think I get a bit of a crust on them and they go hard on top. So when you're watering, you're not really watering, the plant is rolling down the sides and uh, it's not getting to the roots in the way it should be. But uh, and this is one of the main reasons I make my own compost up. Um, I use my own compost, my own pot and compost from the bins, riddled. It's got a quite a good bit of soil in it. Um, so in reality, it's, it's like a, a John Ends based compost. It's a bit heavy, plus it always has a, a couple of extra handfuls of sharp sand in mine. So it's really free drain. So get a compost right first, and then you shouldn't have any problems with your watering. If you do overwater them, and it's a good free drain of compost, then they should, you know, they should free drain straight away. And, uh, and not leading to it. But on the on the point of seedlings, um, if you're using your, if you're losing seedlings through um, through being overwatered, and then you're, you're definitely using the wrong compost. Um, when I start with my seedlings, I always use a multi-purpose compost. I know the sharp sand, there is some 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 sand mixed in with multi-purpose, but I always add an extra handful of mine. So if I add a, if I've got a bucket of multi-purpose compost. I'll add an extra half a bucket to sand to that, so it makes it really free draining. And uh, and then again, once again, it's sitting in the trays, um, just like these. And there, that's just starting to pop its way through there. I put a couple of seeds in there the other day, and that's a really free draining soil. Put the seeds in, they don't really get overwatered. You get enough water from down below, and then they'll just pop their way through. But um, I think it just takes um, it just takes a, a few years to learn exactly what you like. That tree there will show you perfect. Well, that's a that's a tree full of Malaga melon I put in a week ago, and it all popped through. What's in the top there is a little bit of vermiculite. Now, if you do feel that your soils or your mixture is a bit too free draining. You can add a bit of vermiculite, and what vermiculite does, it acts like a sponge, it holds the water. So there again, there's all different uh, there's all different ways 
if the making your mixes up, you know, if you're uh, if you're not too sure. Um, for free draining, I'll use perlite, and vermiculite for holding the water. So it, it depends on what your soil is or what your compost is. You know, you can add to it or you can take away from it. Um, but you, you know, if you get a a good tray full of seedlings like that, your watering should be spot on and y your mix is spot on. But um, as I say, I'll try and point out in the next couple of videos of the uh, different mixes that I do make up. Um, I show you tomorrow. These these are just dead. These are my last crop. My last seedlings I put in, uh, and these were put in four weeks ago, and these are money maker, and they're already lit up. There's the two leaves, first leaves there, spot on. Growing away really nice. Um, and these are the last ones, but because these go into the, uh, into the greenhouse or into the polytunnel cold, the same as the ones up, up the allotment, they're cold. So, as I say, they're growing away smashing. Uh, there's no heat on in here. The temperature is uh, 70 in here, and that's with the door wide open in the summer. But uh, yeah, I'm over the moon. But yeah, on the cucumbers, right? So cucumbers, melons, squashes, and everything else that goes with them. Um, now I normally sow them in small pots, and there is two perfect little examples. As I say, nice deep pot. Good sharp sand, multi-purpose compost, and good sharp sand, and a little bit of a milk light, just on the top, where I make the impressions for the seedlings. Now with these, uh, the seedlings, it doesn't matter what, what you get, the seed pod should be always a, a decent size, and always point these on the pointy end up, stick them in your compost, or on the edge. Um, trouble is with these, if you overwater them too much, nine times out of ten, your seed will just rot away. But if you, if you put it on the side, or put it on the point, and then when it when you're watering, and that's why that's another reason why I never water from above. I'll sp I'll mist and I'll spray from above, but I'll always water from down below in the tree, and that way you don't lose your seed. The likes of these, the seed are very expensive, so you know if you're going to start watering from the top, and you start losing them, and then it's all money wasted. Um, these are the, these are the honey boat, the the honey the honey boat squash, and there's uh, there's eight of them in a packet, and I think they were three pounds for a packet, but they've all come through. They're all through nice and nice size there. Yeah? I'm in two minds whether to use these for the Three Sisters Challenge. So I'm getting all geared up for that. Um, my sweet corn up the allotment's going great. It's up there, uh, inch and a half, two inches now. I'll show you that in the end of the video. Um, when we get up the plot tomorrow. For the newcomers, for the ones that just come on the site there, new subscribers, I'm down home. I'm in my little 6x6 six six at home. It's absolutely marvellous here. Yeah. Over in the west there, the sun's just setting, so there may, may be a bit of uh, discoloration on the film, but it's absolutely beautiful. Uh, I love this time of the year, May, spring, early spring, brilliant. So as I say, the cucurbits, um, I've, I've, so I've sowed the squash, and what I've got here, I've got some uh, sugar baby watermelons. Now, um, these are for Dean Roberts on... Dean's back garden veg. Now it's a possibility Dean I could be using these for the Three Sisters Challenge. Now I've never grown the watermelon before. Or I've never grown, I should say, I've never grown the sugar baby before. Now, these are from King Seeds. And uh, already I've got them um, two, four, six, eight, ten. I've got ten popping through there. And I think there was a dozen seed or fifteen seed in the packet. And I'm, I'm counting ten, eleven. I've got eleven coming through there now, so that's pretty good. I'm, I'm over the moon with them. So I might be using them, Dean, for the Three Sisters Challenge. Uh, I'll see how they grow. I've got umpteen things to try. I've got the pumpkins. They're growing away really nicely. Um, they're just a dwarf pumpkin. I did save the seed off my own seed last year, off my own pumpkin, of the grandson from um, Halloween night. And uh, as I say in the last one, I did. I checked them earlier on to see what the germination was like. Really good, but they, they're romping through, coming away really nice. Now these ones are first time I've grown these, and the, I got these from uh, Lee on Lee for the allotment. Well, Lee, thanks very much again for the free seed, mate. And these are artichokes. Well, first time I've grown them, but there we are. I've got one, two, three, four, five. I've got six seedlings just popping through there. Now, I'm just going to let them grow on. I'm not in any hurry to pot them off, as you know by now. I'm never in a hurry to pot anything off me. 
I always like to let it go really well before I start interfering with it. Uh, now I've got, the, I've got another challenge to do this year. Apart from the three sisters, I'm going to do the uh, the washing basket challenge with um, with Dean Don near uh, back on veg. Uh, now this is one of the trays, and I'll just show you what I mean by I'm never in a hurry to put off. Um, this is a full tray of um, petunias. Now, when people are putting off, especially petunias, busy lizzies, uh, marigolds, I never, never put them off singly. Never. I'm a great believer in that. And if you want a good first cut display, and if you want to follow me the way I grow them, and the way I put them up, you'll get a shock at the end of this video when I show you when I tip a tray of um, marigolds out, it's just a blanket of root. The full tray will just tip out and it'll be a full blanket and people will say, they're well too grown them to be putting up. or far too much root in them. Not at all, not at all. And I'll show you my way. And I've done this for about five, six, maybe seven years now. And it was just one year by accident. I think I had been a really busy year, working full time, and I had just left these this tree of marigolds on the top shelf to grow and grow and grow and they've got they've got a more or less the size they are now when I'm putting them off and when I tip them out and I found the root ball and I, I just started stripping them down into little clumps I found it much easier um, to put on and to grow on and uh, I lost nothing lost none of them whatsoever so you know when, you, when you're putting petunias up or um, busy lizards are the same thing uh, not busy lizards sorry lobelia I always put them up in little clumps, little twos, threes and fours, and I think they grow much easier. And I'll just, these are multi-cell trays. Now these are coming out of here because they're going into six cell trays in the next week or two. I'll just ease one of them out of there, it's a plug plant. Oh, it's absolutely fantastic, it's grown really well, nice and moist, water from below. I've got big bread trays on the allotment with polythene sheets over them and newspapers, and I, I water everything from down below. Now there, there's three little petunias in one plug, I can count them, there's actually four in that little plug but that just goes, just goes to show you when I'm putting up, I don't put them up singly ones, I don't stand for hours and then pricking little single ones out I just pick little clumps out and uh, if you're like me, big fingers and arthritis you know, there's no harm in it and you'll find it much easier um, putting on like that uh, the way I do it but I'll, I'll bring a tray full of the marigolds down, or I'll do it up the allotment tomorrow. Um, because I'm busy putting mine off now. That's half a tray there left. And that's, I don't know if you can see it. You can see the root ball in there? That is solid root. And all I do with them, if you can see, I just tease them apart and a little clumps of threes and fours. Now with this compost, um, it's my own compost, which I showed you in a couple of videos before when I was sowing the seeds. Um, I broadcast the seed and uh, marigolds, sweet pea, dahlias, I sow them all in my own multi-purpose compost. That's my own special mixture. Nice deep tray. Okay. Um, doing a nice deep tray, and of course, if you look on that, you can see there's perlite mixed in with that, so it makes a really good mix up. But um, yeah, I'm well chuffed with that. Um, as I say, little clumps, small little clumps of fours and fives, and you can work your way through. You will get some weed growing because it's my own compost. Um, I put a bit of my own compost in from the. Uh, from the bin so you will get a bit of weed growing through it but that's nothing, you can just work your way through the clumps and then a small plot, well there's one, two, there's, there's four little seedlings in that, that little clump and they've just been potted up give them a watering and they, they'll sit in there for a good three to four weeks, no problem and you get a lovely big bunch when you tip that plant out, it's perfect be a full, full pot of root and a good little plant bushy plant full of flowers for it to go out into the garden now these I'm putting these up specially because uh, these ones are going in for the, um, the washing basket challenge. So uh, Dean Roberts, well, 
There's my first plants. These are my own marigold. I've saved these for about 10 years. And uh, they're a little dwarf ones, so I'll be using them. I like to use these for going amongst my tomatoes, um, the dwarf ones. And they give a nice bit of scent off and uh, the white fly away from the tomatoes. And I'm going to be using them in the washing basket challenge. So that's my first flower that I've picked. My second one is the petunias. Um, of course, I'll have the busy lizzies. I've got Nicotiana. Um, I've got some uh, some fuchsias, some geraniums. And I've got uh, I've got quite a mixture up there, so I still don't know what uh, which way I'm going to go about it yet. Which which plants I'm going to use, but uh, the first thing I'll do tomorrow, I'll get the washing basket out, and I'm going to have to work out the circumference, work out how many holes is around the bottom. And uh, so I can work it from row to row to row, put in two, miss one, put in two, miss one, and then all the way around, and so you get a nice even display. And what I want to do with the washing basket is put some sort of a trolley on the bottom, so it'll wheel around easy on the on the patio just for turning in the sunshine. Uh, but that's all uh, for to do tomorrow. I'll work it out and see if I can get some again. Um, see if I can get it, some work out. I've got a bit of a trolley, a bit of a cage to sit on there, a pot trolley. Um, I think I'll fix out a piece of wood, fix the wood at the bottom of the basket, and then I've got to decide on the compost what I'm going to use. Um, because a big basket like that's going to take a lot of compost, and you don't want too much weight in it. But there again, you don't want to have a loose compost like multi purpose compost because trying to water that whole basket is going to be a job and a half. So I'm thinking of putting some sort of a pipe down the centre filled with sand and gravel. Yeah, so you take the water in and it'll water the whole basket evenly. But um, we'll do that tomorrow. But for the time being, I'm going to knock off in it because I've got loads of potting off to do. I want to get some of these um, petunias potted up in the next pot. I'll maybe put a few into these. I'll, I'll work out how many holes there is around the basket and uh, count up how many plants I'm going to need. So I've got all these plants down here ready. And then uh, hopefully in a couple of weeks' time, we'll start potting it up. Um, the only trouble is, if I was doing it up the allotment, I could do it in a polytunnel and it would be shattered from any frosts. Being in the back garden here is going to be the only problem. What I might do is I might put it against the back fence and drape some sort of a polythene sheet down over it. Um, I know Dean Roberts was talking about 25th of May, but that, that's early for us up here, especially for begonias and petunias, very frost tender. So I might put it up against the back fence and just roll a sheet of, of uh, clear polythene down of a night end over it, uh, just in case there is any frosts. A bit of fleece or something like that, it always comes in handy. But I'm not going to take a chance of getting the whole basket filled and finding out I get a freezing cold morning and it's knocked everything back. So that's uh, that's one thing you've got to take into, into account is, their, uh, is where you're going to put it, where you're going to position it and um, for your light. Because you're going to have to turn it every day um, for your light. Otherwise you're going to have one side of your basket grown and the other side not. So it's going to be, be turned every day. So if it's a big heavy basket them handles are going to take some strain and that's the idea of me putting a little trolley on the bottom so I'll be able to turn it quite easy um, quarter turn every day in the sunshine so you get a nice even growth in the basket every, every day, every week um, but that's that's part of the plan what I'll do is I'll get the basket out tomorrow and I'll, uh, before we go to the plot and I'll show you what I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work out on the basket ok, so I'll see you in the morning bye for now Right, well, good afternoon everybody. I've uh, finally managed to get up the plot after uh, the last few days. It's been really cold, uh, windy, got a little bit of rain coming in now, but uh, I hope it's not going to put us off for the night, getting a few bits and pieces done. Right, as I finished off the last video, I was showing you how I come up with my marigolds, and these are the, the large ones, I'll not be using these in the greenhouse. What I will be doing is uh, I'll give these to family and friends for the garden. Absolutely lovely plant. But there, uh, normal standard tree. And this is my own compost, so you get quite a, quite a lot of weeds in this. So all I do is I, I broadcast the marigolds on the top of the seed tree and just cut over, cut over a quarter of an inch. And just all you have to do is just break away, just give it a bit, twist and turn, get your hands in, turn it out. There you are, absolutely fantastic. Absolutely beautiful, a nice coat of matting, and already all I did on the corner is just there. Uh, break away. And 
There we are, fantastic. Easy as that. Go back in the tray. You can go on the top. Once you get a little clumps of seedlings, you can just uh, pick your way through the, the weeds, the grimsel. Any grass that's in there, any bits and pieces. And what you have left, on the little clumps, that's just perfect little clumps for breaking up the nice little pots like that. And what I like to do is I say it's exactly the same with the um, with the, the petunias and the fizzy lizzies and uh, the petunias and the lobelia. I never put them up singly. I always make nice little bunches like that. And they go they grow much better in a pot. Small six centimetre pot, a little bit of pot and compost in. Just get it nice and centre. And then there we go. And to me, that's a perfect little plant. Give that a good water. I've got uh, about four three or four of them up there. I do the when I saw the uh, the video in the greenhouse and I did the small ones, the small ones are for going amongst my tomatoes. Um, and the big ones, like you say, the big ones, they'll just go to the gardens. Now I am in, also in the challenge with uh, with Dean Rob, Roberts, so I want some marigolds to put on my basket in the basket channels. Um, so I'm going to have to put up a full tray full of them. And I think once again I'll just put them up into, into small pots like that and they can sit there for another two or three weeks, because like, like you say, up north here, it's a little bit cooler than what it is down Yorkshire or down south, wherever they, you're doing your challenges. Um, as this weather has proven this weekend, it's going to drop the minus up here in the northeast. There's nothing outside yet that's, that can harm. Um, I've got a couple of rows of carrots in, a couple of rows of parsnips, and my me, uh, me main crop potatoes. Everything else, even my dahlias, my dahlia tubers are sitting inside the greenhouse here. Just a cool greenhouse. No chance of putting them outside just yet. So, as I say, that's the, uh, that's the marigold starter, it's a large one, it's a cracker jack. Um, always treat these exactly the same way. And you get a fantastic little plant. Within, within a couple of weeks time, yeah, that pot will be absolutely full of roots and it'll be a perfect little plant, two or three little plants together. I hate it, just singly little potted plants, the petunias are exactly the same, I showed you the trees. Um, and if I can reach over, which I can just reach them, and there's, there's my lobelia there. Now I potted the lobelia off um, about four weeks now. Roger uh, took it out of the multi-cell trays and he put it into the six-cell trays. And if I can just see this out, there we are. Now that, to me, you'll never find anything like that any better in the shops. It's a perfect little pot of, uh, of lobelia, mixed lobelia. And that's, that's where we let them grow. Now they'll come out of here this week and they'll go on the back bench over on the far side there where it's nice and cool. So that's them out the way for the time being. I'll finish these off later. And one of my main jobs to do the night, which I've been promised promised myself for the last uh, three or four days, I'll just put them down to one side as of course get these big boys sorted out. There you are, Dean. Here's mine, peaches and cream, that's a seeds I got from Dean Roberts. Absolutely fantastic. Now once again, they'll go into small pots. Now this is for the three sisters challenge. So as I say, we'll just start in this corner one. Timing is everything. Get your timing right. Now that to me. Perfect. Lovely little root ball. And a fantastic little plant. That can go into there now. Now these will probably only sit in here for a week. Because as I says in the video, sweet corn are really greedy. Um, they need a, a good compost. Nothing wrong with that. Now I'll do all them exactly the same. They'll probably only sit in this pot for about a week to a fortnight. If I've got to pot them on again, in a, a 9 centimetre pot, by it, which is just a little bit bigger, not much difference, I will do. Because what I want, I want to plant like that by the end of the month, when them potatoes come out of the bottom tunnel, I want all my sweet corn, and I want that, I want that pot absolutely filled with fruit. So, from there, to there, to there, easy. Right, so, once I've potted these up, I'm starting my next step to the, to the challenge, which is, of course, 
the peas. Now the peas I'm using is pea alderman. That's a six foot, six foot variety. So that's going to go in now. And what mine are going to go into, if I can open it up, is these lovely little square containers. And of course these are biodegradable. Spot on. And that'll be filled up with a little bit of compost. And I'll sow three peas to each container. Well, they can just go on a bread tray and give them a good soaking and they'll stop nice and moist. As I say, I always wait until I get my sweet corn to this size. Once the sweet corn gets size, I'm going to the first potting and then I'll plant my peas. Reason being, where the peas are grown, they're getting to a nice size and in three weeks time, four weeks time, they'll be perfect for planting out in the bottom tunnel. Once the titties are out and the peas should be just coming up two to three inches high. And then I can plant the sweet corn and I can plant the peas alongside the sweet corn. And then next week, what I'll do next week, I'll sow the, the melons or the squashes. Well, I haven't decided which one I'm going to go with yet. Melons or squash. I'll probably go a bit of each one. But what I'll do, I'll sow them next week. So about in three to four weeks time, even five weeks, they'll have a nice sized melon or a squash to plant out um, around the sweet corn and around the peas. I don't want to put them in too early. I don't want to have too big a plant because I find that once, once they get in the ground and start growing, the leaves are just massed straight out and what you don't want, you don't want your peas being overshadowed by the leaves of the melons or the squashes. Um, so, do it in stages. As I say, sweet corn first, sow my peas tomorrow, so my peas will be just a nice size to put up alongside these sweet corn and then the squashes or the melons will be just a nice size to put in once these get a hold in the bed. But, we'll go all through that, no problem, in the next couple of stages. For the time being, I'm going to crack on here. I'll get the peas sown tomorrow. It's an easy job. As I say, just putting the compost in. Three peas. Just make sure the compost is nice and damp. And then we'll uh, we'll sow the peas tomorrow. But uh, for the time being, we'll knock off. I'll show you the basket I've just gotten. That's, that's just come. But what I want to do is I want to take a, I've got a, a pot wheel over there. I want to take that down with us. And I think I'll find a piece of timber that I can cut a circle out of. And uh, I'm going to try and construct my basket before uh, before I start planting it up. I want it all built. I want a nice bit of pipe to go through the centre. Um, the pipe's going to have all the holes in. And we're going to fill it with gravel and sand so that's easier for watering. It's going to, hopefully it's going to water the whole basket from the outside. Uh, outside inwards. Or inside outwards. Whatever. Uh, but that's my plan anyway. But I'll show you that when we get on home tomorrow. We'll, I'll get the basket out. We'll have a good look at that. I'll get a few bits and pieces I need and uh, we'll crack on. As you can see, the place is full of tomatoes at the moment. And that's all I've done for the last couple of weeks is to put tomatoes off. These are the third little Spanish that I've put in. And my first ones are in the big tunnel. They were planted uh, a week ago. And uh, as you see, I've had quite a few orders for tomatoes. So there's people coming up, getting bits and pieces from us. Uh, the onions, I've got a load of onions to plant out. I was hoping to get them out this week, but as they were turning cold, I'm just going to knock off. I'm going to leave it for the time being. I'm just going to carry on, just trying to get some of these potted up and uh, see how we go. But uh, for the time being, I'm just going to, as I say, I'm going to, I'm going to leave it at. Crack on getting these sweet corn done. Yeah. Uh, one last thing before I go. Begonias. Now, uh, a couple of the lads mentioned on the um, on the Facebook page uh, about begonias trying seedlings, and I've, I've grew seedlings before. But they are, they're really difficult. You've got to have the perfect conditions. You've got to have heat. Because um, they don't like it cold whatsoever. You've got to have plenty of heat earlier on. So what I like to do, I just send away for the plug plants. And uh, these are perfect. I think for uh, for 40 plug plants, it was about £8. So well worth it. But what I'm going to do tonight, I'm going to pot some of them up. Because some of them will be going into the, into the basket challenge. Um, I've got the lavilia. I've got the petunias. Begonias. Busy Lizzie's, I've got the uh, Silver Center area, and uh, and of course me, me Daisy. So I've got quite a good selection to go in the, in the basket. So if I can get them all potted up into these size pots, they'll sit in there for at least another two to three weeks. And by then it'll be the end of May, and hopefully we'll get the basket planted up. But uh, I'll not start planting it up until I get down home. I've got everything ready, and of course I'm going to make a little bit of cover for it. Because if it does turn cold in here, 
Once the basket's outside, you kind of shift it. I kind of wheel it into the pulley tunnel, like uh, up here, or I wheel it into the, the greenhouse with having to step on. Um, so what I'll do is I'll make a bit of a polythene cover over the fence so I can just drape it over like a curtain or a bit of um, a bit of fleece. So whichever way I go, I'll show you behind the next video. But for the time being, I'm going to crack on with these and I'll uh, I'll see you down home and I'll show you the basket. Okay, bye for now. Right, well, hopefully we're back again. You wouldn't believe it. Um, 20 minutes from the allotment. Come down and the sun's out. It's absolutely fantastic here now in the northeast. It was freezing cold when I was up the allotment. It was black. I was ready for another shower and I thought, well, I'll pop down and get this video finished off. And lo and behold, the sun's come out. Crazy weather. But uh, it's still not going to tempt us to get any plants pro this week. I'm just going to bide my time. So here's me, me basket, Dean. I just wanted to find out what sort of bottom it is, good solid bottom. I'm going to have to make a base for this, <coughs> make a wooden base, screw the wooden base onto there, and then put some sort of carriage on the bottom with wheels on, something that you move a pot around the garden with. Because if you look at the size of that basket, and once that's full of compost, you've only got a couple of firmer handles on it. Say, if you're going to try and shift that, um, or turn it every other day, and what I like to do with it being so fishing in the garden, I'm going to give it a quarter turn every day. So it's a quarter turn every day. So you get a full sun on at least every side every other day, or every three to four days. So it's, uh, you're not getting um, an unequal growth. If you if you don't shift it, what you'll end up with is the plants growing right out on one side and after dying on the other side. Uh, one other thing to think about, of course, is the water. And the size of that basket, <coughs> when it's full of compost, for it, if you're watering from the top, for to get to the bottom, you're going to put a hell of a lot of water in there to get to the bottom. Um, so you might think the, the top's going to get really soaked, and you might end up you might end up losing plants on the top of them, rotting off with the amount of moisture you're going to be putting on there. So I'm thinking about putting a piece of gutter in there, just a piece of black pipe, cut it to length. Um, Drill it full of holes up and down the sides and fill it with sand and gravel and that way you can just pour water into the tube and hopefully it'll spill out into the into the compost. Uh, that's my thinking anyway. I'll not be putting any holes in the bottom because there's a, there's a good uh, four inch gap from the first holes where the first plants will go. And what I'm going to do with here, I'm going to fill this with um, some uh, white polystyrene pieces and that'll just act like a well. So once uh, a bit of straw manure on the top of that, and uh, once the compost hits that, it's going to act like a sponge. And any water, any excess moisture is going to sit in the bottom. But the um, hopefully the manure and the compost will just take the water up gradually. It'll not drown any plants, but uh, that's that's my idea. No holes in the bottom, and I'll just start planting out from there. Um, and I haven't worked out the system yet. I'm going to have to go two, um, two planted, miss two, two planted, and then on the next row it'll be two and miss two. So we'll get two above where you've missed that one, um, or miss that row completely and then go to the next row. Uh, but we'll work all that out um, later on. As I say, I'm not going to plant mine up until about the um, third week in May. Maybe it's towards the end of the May because up here in the northeast it can be really cold, it can get frost. Uh, it's going to go up against the back fence there. Now that's so fierce, and this is east, uh, the west I should say. I'll get uh, lots of sunshine in the west hitting that back fence, so that's where I'm going to place it. Just handy until I can put a sheet of polythene of an evening over it, and then once all the cold was uh, passed in June, first two weeks in June, I'll pull it forward and stand on the end of this patio here. Hopefully we shouldn't have any more frosts, but uh, that's, the, that's the basket challenge, that's that out of the way. Um, as I say, as we're getting nearer, as we're getting nearer the date, I'll, uh, I'll give you a rundown of the plants I'm using. Um, the greenhouse is starting to empty out a little bit up here, not much. Um, still full of tomatoes down here, that's the money makers I've got. They're my last ones, they're my main crop, they're going to go into one of the, the cold polytunnels and uh, get a fantastic crop from them. Always grow their money maker. And uh, of course, my other favourite, here's a Craig, 
I'll be growing some of these outside uh, with just a little bit of cover and a little bit of plastic cover so we'll get some of that craig outside I'll wait for them, spot on I'm over the moon and as I say, as I pointed out, they're cucubits well they're, they're romping away now for the, um, the Three Sisters Challenge I've done my sweet corn, I've plucked the sweet corn up the night, they're all done and um, tomorrow morning when I go up the plot I'm going to sow the peas and then I've, what I've got following is uh, the honey boat squash or the small melon I don't know which ones I'm going to use, I haven't decided yet it depends on how fast and how how big they grow what I might do tonight, I've got a spare pack of seed there and what I might do tonight I might sow them tonight and of course these are the, the Malaga melon once again if I sow them tonight and if they're just a small size by the end of this month by the time they come through, give them a week, to, week eight days seven, eight days to come through um, and then by the time I pot them off, if I get them to that size by the end of this month, I'll use them because I don't want to put too big a plant in as I explained, I want to get the, the sweet corn in first I want the beans climbing up the side I want them growing really well before I decide to put these in and of course once these get a hold of the good fresh soil that's in their tunnels they'll romp away they'll cover up the leaves uh, the leaves are massive but hopefully by then the peas and the beans the, the beans will be right up up the sweet corn and out of the bottom country where they'll take over so that's my plan but I'll report back to that when we get started on it but um, I'm going to show them tonight as with any cucubits um, you, always, you know me, what my mix is really free draining soil um, compost with a little bit of perlite or a little bit of vermiculite whatever you want to use but really free draining plenty of good sharp sand in it have it nice and moist put it in your pots what I'll be sowing these in is a multi cell tray there's a 20 seed in there so they'll go into there nicely put them in a solid tray and water from the bottom which I always do nice solid tray there so put the water in the bottom and that'll just water the plants all over but I'll, uh, I'll put them i pack packing a melon in tonight, get them sown. As I say, I've got um, I've got melons already sown. Um, crystal lemon, that's another cucumber. Uh, as I was explaining with the cucumbers, you've got to be very careful with the water and on these. It doesn't matter which one, squashes, cucumbers, melons, they're all the same family. <coughs> but um, you've just got to go a little bit easier on the watering because if you get too much water on the roots, um, what will normally happen is, the, uh, is they'll snap off at the top, they'll rot off. So if you just water from the bottom nice and carefully, uh, it should be fine. Um, stop misting by all means once you start getting a good sized plant. You can mist it in the evening when it's cool. It's not too warm. But um, that's, that's the main thing about these. Always water from the bottom and uh, you, should get a, you should get a good plant. But um, Hopefully we'll get that sorted. Yeah, uh, not tonight. I'm going to try for the morrow. Um, it's forecast for rain tomorrow, so I might. Uh, depend on the weather. If it if it stays fine, I'll uh, I'll give it a try tomorrow. But it's forecast for rain tomorrow. But uh, well, Monday or Tuesday, it's supposed to get fine. I'm freezing at the moment. Great. I'm just here, uh, I'm going to water, water down in here and then I'll get the uh, get cut. But if it's fine in the morning, I'll give you enough. Right. And I can easily get the stuff out. Uh, no, I'm going to leave for the night because it's going to rain. <laughs> Thanks again. See you later. Alright, well, as I was saying, the cucubits, a strange family, really. And a lot, that's where a lot of people um, a lot of people fall down on these, you know, they're getting too much water. Um, as I say, if you water from underneath, you shouldn't have any problems whatsoever. Uh, once they get once they get grown, once again, a good sized plant, you know, you get a spray out, you can spray them even with, with tepid water, which is what I use them. Not too much, just keep them nice and moist. But um, seedlings is, is exactly the same. Once the seedlings start growing, um, there's another one I've just sowed them last week. That's telepathy. That's another good cucumber. So I've got three different kinds of cucumbers I'm sowing this year. I've got Ladiva, which I sowed last year. Excellent crop. Just a mini sized cucumber. Really good. Telepathy is a nice long one. Um, 
I've grown these for a couple of years running and I've, I've had some pretty good results from them. So I'm over the moon with them. They're coming through there now. Um, I've got the Telepathy, I've got the La Diva, and I've got another Cucumber. Crystal Lemon, that's the lemon ones, that's the same ones. Crystal Lemon. They're a nice round yellow one, nice cucumber. So I've got three different kinds of cucumbers, I've got three different kinds of melons, and I've got two different kinds of squash, plus I've got a pumpkin. So if you haven't got enough there to choose from, well, you never will have. I'm just going to uh, take my time. As I say, I've got a little bit of watering down to do tonight, and then that's me lot. I'm going upstairs, I'm going to have a nice, nice show and a shave, and then just sit down and enjoy myself. But I wanted to get down here, get this, um, get this video finished, and so I can crack on. That's the Lediva. That's the uh, the cucumbers I grew last year. I grew them uh, for the last two years. Brilliant. Really pleased them. Uh, just a small cucumber, a uh, medium-sized cucumber, not too big. Now they'll be potted off the mother. Excuse me. There's still one or two breaking cover there, but uh, on the whole, I'm I'm really really pleased with them. Let them go up front of that day. As I say, there's tomatoes down here that I need to water. Uh, these are the orange kings. They're going up in the trial. I've got uh, I've got all the tomatoes that I'm going to trial this year. I've got them all ready. There's some of them growing away really strong. The UK record holder is fantastic. Uh, and also the um, the Corfu tomato. Oh, oh, I got sent up from uh, somebody down south. I've got the list somewhere. I'll go through the list maybe one day through the week. And I'll explain to you all the different tomatoes that I'm trialling. Um, but uh, apart from that, I'm over the moon. And that is, I think that is another cucumber. Yep, yeah, that's Carmen. I knew I was trialling another one. Um, so I've got, the, I've got the Carmen. So that's four cucumbers I've got. Umpteen tomatoes, I think about 14. I, I've lost count, but uh, we'll, we'll get into them soon. But for the time being, I'm going to... Knock off, get a little bit of putting off done, and uh, get up and put this video online. But uh, for all the new subscribers, thanks again. There's quite a few coming online, I'm over the moon with it. Um, if you get stuck and you want to ask any questions, just comment down below. Or uh, once again, if you want to get on my Facebook page, that's uh, Jeff Holman on the Plot. Join me on the Plot, and you can comment every night uh, on, my, on my Facebook page. We'll have our blog there. Um, as I say, we'll do pictures and uh, have a chat, regular chats most nights, so you'll be welcome on it. Just send us a request and uh, send us a friend's request and we'll get you on the plot. But uh, I'm over the moon with that, the way things are growing. Everything's going great. Um, your main priority is getting the tomatoes planted out over the next fortnight. Now I do mine in bits and pieces, I don't do them all together. I do them in stages. I've got the big Spanish ones out now. I've just started with a few of the American ones and some of the... Um, some of the smaller types, I've got the um, the money maker to go in next week, and I've got the yields I create to follow on after that. So, they'll not all come at once, but uh, I'll stagger them over the next couple of weeks. But I'll keep you I'll keep you updated um, on the washing challenge, on the three sisters challenge, and uh, no doubt there'll be one or two other. I've still got them sunflower seeds sitting up in the garden. I've, every time I go up there, I mean to sow them. Uh, they're from Dean Hood. But uh, maybe it's tomorrow. I'll write it on the back of my hand, sow sunflower seed, so I don't forget, and uh, I'll see if I can get a, see if I can get one to match Dean's off last year, but uh, it's all good, hopefully next week the frame comes off my leg, half fits off now, um, so I'm looking forward to the next week, and the rest, if the rest comes off, I'll be well chuffed, I still not be able to do any heavy digging or anything yet, but uh, I can get around a little bit easier on the plot, and that's what I'm looking forward to, so for the time being, I'm going to Knock off, do a little bit more putting off here, and then I'll get up, I'll get this video online. So, thanks all for watching, thanks for sharing, and uh, thanks all for commenting. As I say, if you want to get on my Facebook page, send me a request, and we'll, we'll get you on. The sun's absolutely fantastic. I can't believe it for what well, was just half an hour ago, I was on the plot, and it was freezing cold. It was pitch black. I thought we were going to have a, a heavy shower, but. Um, no, it's, it, the sun's out there beautiful now, so I'm going to enjoy this last half hour in the garden, and uh, I might even crack myself a can of beer. But uh, the wife's away to bingo, so my time's ruined now. Okay, so once again, thanks everybody for sharing, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. 
and we'll be doing what peas and beans out in the garden um, where the apple trees are I'm going to sort some peas and beans out so I'll, I'll start the next video off in there and we'll uh, we'll get on and I'll show you how to plant them okay so I'll see you all again soon Bye.